Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're finally gonna get started on the ARC-7. It's been a little while, work got a little crazy, crazy times we're living in right now, but finally coming across to the ARC-7. I've been stockpiling a bunch of parts to throw on. Um, we're gonna completely change the look of the car. So let's get started on this. I got rid of the Volks that I had on. Um, we're gonna go with these wheels for a little while. And um, I'm also going with a new bumper as well. Uh, suspension is all gonna be changed. We're also adding side skirts. I'm gonna get the car in the air, uh, start taking off these wheels and get started on the suspension. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get rid of these coilovers here. Um, I'm gonna keep these camera arms, but when you do lower the car, at least for me, with these arms in particular, they're a little bit close, and as you can see, it kind of uh, kind of hits the coilovers right here. So we have to make some clearance for that. So what I had in mind was to just get a camera plate up top to kind of push the strut over a bit. I'm thinking we'll get some clearance over here and kind of move the uh, the whole strut itself closer into the towards the engine bay. Now the big issue there with these coilovers for the RX-7 is they don't come with the capacity to mount the camera plate. So if you take this off, um, and this camera plate here is from a uh, WRX, like a GD chassis, um, there's nowhere really to mount this on. So I'm actually going to steal one of these mounts and mount it onto the RX-7 coilover and then we could get some camera plates on there. So now I do make camera plates. I do run a company called Oni Made that specializes in uh, camera plates for Oni camber. Um, so what I did was actually took one of my plates and kind of customized it, re-drilled it, recut it to fit the RX-7. So if you look at these top hats, they'll fit perfectly. And we're gonna swap these in. We're gonna use this adapter to mount onto the RX-7 coilover. So we'll assemble these. I actually stole these off of a uh, set of coilovers that I just had laying around for WRX. I don't have a WRX anymore, so I'm just gonna borrow these. I'm gonna ditch those plates there and uh, run these plates to fit right onto the RX-7. Once I have everything together, the uh, strut itself would be able to kind of lean towards the engine bay and the uh, upper control arm won't be hitting it. All right, so now there you have it. Um, if you take a look at the difference of the coilovers now, one is gonna be super tight uh, away from the control arm and leaning more towards the uh, uh, shock tower, I guess, uh, strut tower um, walls on the inside, while this one will stay um, more in line, if anything. So we'll have a lot more clearance from the control arm hitting this now that this is leaned over. So. I'll make the conversion on this one right now and then uh, we'll get ready to install the coilovers. First, we gotta pull the existing ones out and then these go in. Um, the upper control arm is gonna stay in. The lower control arm is gonna stay in and I do have some drop knuckles. I'm gonna see 
um, what's needed to go in. I think I need some tie rods, so I picked those up as well. So these are some new gold goodies. These are the uh, Powered by Max uh, Trop Knuckles. They're, they're really used for drifting for extreme angle, but um, also if you look at the spindle, I think the OEM is a little bit lower. So the OEM probably is uh, around right here. This one is up here. So basically I got these, so I'll be able to um, drop the car without compressing the suspension, if that makes sense. Um, when you don't compress the suspension, also, again, the upper control arm stays away from hitting that coil over. So we'll be safe. This is just uh, kind of like an added insurance in addition to the camera plates and we should be able to get a lot of angle out of the car and also run it safely. So this is gonna be a project in itself. All right guys, so we're pretty much almost done with this. Um, this nut just came off. All I did was hit it with the uh, impact. And I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was worried about this, but it literally just comes right off. I thought I was gonna have to get a puller and all that, but thank God. Um, it looks like the bearings are good. Uh, they look new. So they don't make any noise or anything. So we're gonna swap this onto the new knuckle and just throw the new knuckle in. Pretty easy so far. All right, so we have both spindles out. Um, so if you can actually take a look and if we uh, kind of align the bottom of these, don't pay attention to the brake holes for the caliper, but uh, for this ball joint at the bottom, if we kind of align them and we look at these spindles, see this one is a lot higher. Um, what this is gonna allow me to do is uh, keep the suspension um, where it normally would be with the two wishbones kind of parallel, uh, but the wheel will be higher. So. We'll be able to lower the car without really compressing the suspension. And in my case, when the suspension is not gonna be compressed, it's gonna clear the uh, strut on the coilover. So uh, these are a little bit pricey, I think like 500 bucks, 600 bucks, but um, I mean, if, if they work out, then it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna start putting the uh, bearing and hub on here. Uh, we also have to do the caliper um, I noticed that the ABS sensor, it looks like it, there's no hole. I think it goes right here. So there's no hole for that. Nor is there any holes for the brake dust shield, which I kind of don't want anyway. It's a piece of shit. Um, so we'll start. Uh, I got to look up the torque rating for this axle nut here or the spindle nut, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll put everything together. We'll get it on the car. Um, and that'll be it for the uh, right side then it's just a matter of doing the same exact process to the left side. So let's get started on this. Okay, so again, I just wanna show you the difference. Uh, these are the existing Tane coilovers that were already on the car. Um, and I'm putting in these new BC coilovers. Um, so if you just, again, look at the top hats, you can see how much more clearance we'll get with these camera plates. All right, guys, so we're all good. I do have the drop knuckle on. Um, coilover is also in, it's, if you could look, if you can see, we do have the camera plates in and the coilover is pushed closer towards the engine. That'll give us a lot of space for this upper camera arm to kind of just move freely um, and get the right amount of suspension travel. Um, and I did run into an issue. So Part Shop Max actually uh, mentions on their website that if you want to run their knuckles, um, you would have to run their outer tie rods. So they recommended to buy these, but now these don't thread on to the inner tie rod. So I don't know, I'm gonna reach out to them and see, but this kind of screwed me up. Um, I guess I'm gonna just bolt the factory outer tie rod to here for now. I'm not gonna drive the car, it's just gonna be in the driveway parked, but I do have to move it back to fit everything inside the driveway and be able to uh, close the gates. So I guess I'm gonna put this back on and take some pictures, send it over to the Parts Shop Max and see exactly what's going on. I don't know if I need uh, different inner tie rods or if I ordered the wrong outer tie rod. 
I think I'm gonna cap the video here um, and start putting everything in place. Put the car on the ground and uh, be able to push it back. Once I make some progress on the tie rods, I'll be able to button up the whole front suspension and um, we can get started on the rear suspension. Okay, so this is where we're currently at. Uh, I have a ton of angle and it is super low right now. If you guys can see, I'm probably gonna raise it just a bit and maybe take out some more angle. Um, so just for reference, so you guys know, these are 18 by nine and a half plus 12, I believe. And I also have a 20 millimeter thick spacer on it as well. And we still have a ton of room to go. Um, the three piece wheels that I have being built right now for this car are a little bit more aggressive than these, um, including the spacers. So we'll definitely have some room to play around. Uh, I might, like I said, I might take out some of the camber and go, but I'm pretty happy. If you guys can look inside. So if you guys can see inside, I have a ton of room between the coilover and the upper control arm. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. We'll have a ton of suspension travel, no problem at all while running super low. I just gotta get the outer tie rod situated. Uh, I got in contact with Part Shop Max. They're working on it. Um, I think I'm gonna have to need inner tie rods, which kind of sucks because their website says in order to uh, run the knuckles, all I need is outer tie rods, but I guess it is what it is. Um, I'll order those and get everything situated for this side. Uh, once I do, I'll just do the same thing on the other side and then we could get started on the rear. I do have upper control arms from Part Shop Max for the rear. Uh, so we're gonna do coilovers again in the rear uh, as well as the upper control arms for the rear, just maxed out to get some nice angle on there. And then we'll be done. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Um, I guess this is maybe gonna be like a two or three episode build. I do have this rear strut bar. Uh, my buddy in Russia actually fabbed this up and shipped it to me. Um, so I guess when I do the rear uh, coilovers, I'll put this in as well. And um, we have some interior goodies going in the RX-7, but yeah, I have a lot of work ahead of me. So tune into the next episode when we start fixing the front and the rear coilovers and suspension. Uh, see you guys next time.